Okay, colleagues, can you hear me? Oh, great. Well, because uh, we don't have much time, I think uh, I would like us to, to kind of like uh, start start the, the, the short presentation. And, and this short presentation basically is how is how we are, we are actually planning to use an innovation that we developed in Kenya as a system for early warning early response in digital peace building this 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 uh, system uh, i mean this innovation basically uses whatsapp and facebook to kind of like give early warning signs of potential violence ahead of elections, but it had gone beyond those elections to act as a very sustainable early warning system that could be mainstreamed elsewhere as far as the predominant conflicts are concerned in Kenya. That in fact, Mascani currently is championing, is actually championing uh, a national digital peace building architecture review to inform how we can use digital tools uh, in peace building in Kenya, because we are overhauling the national peace uh, architecture. And I'm speaking to you from Mombasa. Mombasa is the coastal region of Kenya and one of the post, I mean, one of the hotspot, uh, hotspot areas for for conflict uh, and and basically the conflict you find around Mobasa is related to violent extremism, but we've also seen a little bit of violence that is politically motivated, and sometimes even boundary and natural resource conflict. So, uh, I'm trying to move my slides. Yeah, so basically, Mascani, like I've said, has been motivated by post-election violence because we saw that uh, many youths were, were relying on digital technology at a time when Kenya was going through a political, uh, a very uh, contentious political transition, uh, which pitted major tribes. So what you're seeing there in the images are the youths demonstrating after an episode of violence. In fact, the worst violence happened in 2007, 2008, that even compelled interna international actors led by Kofi Annan to actually come and uh, intervene in those conflicts, leading to what is called the National Accord, and later on, the uh, promulgation of the new constitution. So, so the new constitution in Kenya was a product of serious confrontation between the youth and government officers, as you can see uh, in, uh, in that video there. I mean, that image there where uh, police have often been blamed in Kenya as uh, part of the, uh, part of the uh, uh, institutions that have failed to midwife a democratic transition in Kenya because they failed to understand about the value of citizenship and that citizens are actually taxpayers, and it is indeed them who put that police officer in power, so they should be able to protect them. But this, you see, is happening contrarily. But this really happened in a context where social media spaces emerged as avenues for peace building in an environment where mainstream media was shut down in 2007. So people look for alternative avenues for sharing information so that they can offload their fears of the extent and magnitude of the chaos that ensued after those uh, electoral violence. So we saw something that motivated us to come up with a project uh, on how we can use social media, not this time as a tool for conflict, because we, have already, we already saw how it was used to weaponize uh, hate and, uh, and use uh, ethnicity and polarization to divide people who would therefore 
take arms outside, offline, and harm their neighbors and other citizens. So we saw an opportunity to use social media theoretically on the other side of the sword, which argues that social media actually can also be a tool for peace building because we normally say that social media is a double-edged sword. It can be used for conflict, but also for peace building, as ambiguous as it is. So we piloted this program in Rongo University and the success of that pilot, which had about 10 students and two faculty members, we had a co-creation workshop with them in Kisumu. This was in 2020 when COVID-19 was really alive with us. And we agreed uh, after the discussions that really things that emerged there, that was political issues and ethnic issues were contentious. So ethnic politics was one of those thematic areas that we thought would be very interesting if we see how they played out online and how we could intervene on Facebook and WhatsApp. And we also identified uh, COVID-19 at the time because it was the elephant in the room. So we gathered this workshop first piloting it at one of those universities, which is Rongo University, where I'm actually teaching as a professor of media and security studies. And then we extended these trainings virtually to five other universities, as, to, as you can see, represented with those logos that you're seeing there. Uh, and the logo that you're seeing in blue there is actually BuildUp, which is a peace tech NGO that was responsible for supporting us uh, in that intervention. You might want to wonder, therefore, what Mascani is. Mascani was adapted in Kenya out of the common approach, in, out of the commons approach in the last US elections that propelled Donald Trump into the White House because it was very polarized and that polarization dovetailed into some aspect of insurrection uh, further down the road. So we were supported and we piloted that, like I've observed, and the piloted, pilot allowed us to stay. But when we were doing the selection of participants, we realized that social media platforms also have something to do with youth presence. So we knew that uh, those participants uh, would be young, definitely, and students are young. So we targeted them in, in higher learning institutions and surrounding communities. So these were youths between 18 and 35 years of age. They owned a smartphone. They had a large following online. Uh, in fact, they were actually nano influencers or micro influencers. They significantly spend most of their time online, which was a great incentive. So we thought it wouldn't take a lot to tell them to go online once we train them on how to do digital peace building in those virtual spaces or those social media surfaces in the context of uh, uh, the conceptualization of media in everyday life, which emerges from media studies and early studies on, on, on uh, nationwide television uh, watching in countries like the UK, why it has been seen that uh, that media should be consumed as an aspect of everyday life so that it becomes less intrusive and more adaptable too. We also considered gender balance and obviously uh, predominantly considered ethnic diversity because the politics we saw in Kenya was ethnically driven. So our methodol methodological approach was centered on, uh, on uh, Pan-African philosophies, where on one side we argued that, that uh, a Mascani should be driven by communal values, values of humanity, that is Utu in Swahili, or, or, or Umo, and Umoja, which is unity uh, in Swahili, and Harambe, or collective responsibility. And this was demonstrated through our campaign hashtag, which was hashtag Nguvu Pamoja, or unity strength in, in, in English. This, this hashtag will be traced later on by Facebook bots that will tell us the amount of intervention we reached on those three thematic areas, politics, ethnicity, and COVID-19, as we shall see later. So, so WhatsApp was used for mobilization, for whipping members into action, sharing of knowledge, uh, e.g. documents, and creating the Mascani movement network which is flesh and blood members that can be quickly summoned online, offline and build peace the traditional way. 
So, so here we wanted also to combine the dynamics of online and offline for peace building to work. Because, because often in scholarly literature, we've seen that there's a, there's a correlation between uh, offline polarization and hate, and off, I mean, online polarization and hate, and offline politics. And we've seen cases where people have been mobilized into conflict through virtual spaces. Uh, like in Kenya, there's a video that went viral uh, in the last election where on TikTok, where people were videoed being dis machetes were being distributed to the youth. And they were these youths were supposed actually to go and attack members of the opposing side. And this video really went viral. So we see how social media spaces directly contribute to conflict in offline spaces. So Facebook was actually used as a masca uh, uh, Facebook was used as a as a mascanio in English dwelling where all participants gathered after intervening online in real time. They could come back here and share their frustrations with their digital mascani digital peace building backpack and say the experiences they had with their messaging with themselves and who they are online with the platforms, you know, whether it's, it's a platform that wants a lot of text, less texting like Twitter, or platforms that will, that pre, pre, uh, predominantly would want you to just use visuals like Facebook or, or, or TikTok. And, and they, they really did a lot of peer-to-peer -peer learning there and some self-reflection and social support. This social support really equals the philosophy behind Mascani, which is Harambe that I mentioned that together we are stronger and we can do things communally to succeed as humanity. So the element of Utu is also captured there. Uh, so they also learned challenges emerging from either platform use, audience engagement, user challenges, and the process itself or the digital peace building process. So the participants identified conflict pressure points in, in, uh, in, in, in Kenya and what the causes of, of polarizations would be and these were the politics, ethnicity, and COVID-19, part of it. And then they also identified WhatsApp and Facebook as the most popular social media platforms at that time that they could really use or ride on. And the success of this pilot presented an opportunity to scale like I just talked about, and it scaled it to five more other public institutions in Western Kenya. So we had a total of about 70 plus Mascani digital peace builders and networks of their networks. And when we are doing the training, the participants were trained on digital peace building strategies and given weekly assessments, which were designed in form of sprints or competition to test their understanding. So these digital peace building strategies were actually five of them, key ones that are listed there. One of them was uh, listening and escalating heated conversation where these participants would go in online spaces and uh, fish for, uh, li listen and fish out heated conversations by de-escalating them, like uh, posting, posting something soft about that conversation and something that brought about empathy and compassion. And that conversation would de-escalate in, in some way. Uh, they also did positive messaging, which is this is where you just positive, uh, post uh, encouraging, and are inspiring posts to encourage others, you know. They also did create change from within, and this is where they actually used uh, what they had in them uh, that God gave them, the God-given ability, whether it's painting, drawing, uh, singing, you know, uh, uh, and, and uh, uh, poetry and all those things. And they used that talent to create peace online, for, uh, carve out nice, peace messages and share that online uh, with uh, other unsuspecting online users, youthful as them, to really bring about peace. They also humanize peace, where they give, gave uh, stories a peace building angle. Uh, and, and, and that really resonated well with the audiences. And lastly, they facilitated the polarized dialogue in a case where they at, a dialogue was potentially polarizing and people are driven into two different opposite calls, they would go there and, and back up somebody who is actually seemingly posting something that is trying to de-escalate that kind of a conversation and to turn the heat down. They, they, they learned about that. 
So the most, the most, uh, but the one thing about this, it, it wasn't really a very easy exercise. And, it, and that's why I said earlier that Mascani as the Facebook page represented a home where they would come back and share their frustration and support each other. We had also to motivate them. And this brought about the question of incentivizing digital peace building for longevity. Now we approach this in two ways. One, we understood that it is difficult and expensive to sustain digital peace building. So we were better off to ride on the already free and available infrastructures that the youth have. They have energy, they are creative, they are online, they own digital assets. Uh, and, uh, and of course, uh, uh, they could be very much uh, strategic to passing digital messages when trained on this digital peace building perspective. So there will less be a, there will be of less burden in terms of the kind of support you would want to do them, do, give them because they'll be in those spaces voluntarily and naturally. The difference is that they would now be aware of how to operate in those spaces in a manner that uh, 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 really brings about uh, cohesion and peace. So we rided on the conceptualization of media and everyday life. But we also uh, were concerned about the use of technology because technology is not used, uh, 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 I mean, in, in a, in, in a, in a, it's, a, it's not a one size fits all. It's not something that is, is, is used uh, in a similar way in different contexts. I know people have different ways of, of using technology and therefore, if you look at if you look at theories of innovations and theories of of technology, then you you'll be able to see that technology sometimes is not necessarily progressive because uh, uh, it might necessarily lead to other unwanted consequences. And in this case, we've seen it how it has driven uh, uh, conflict, how how it has shaped conflict the, the dynamics and democracy in in in, in ecologies and contexts like Kenya. So we need to exploit technology in a manner that understand that technology is not just about the technical specifications of tech, but it's also about the user uh, capabilities of how they want to exploit technology and how other variables would, would come into the fore when using technology. These are things to do with uh, policy frameworks, you know, that have to do with digital transformation policy, uh, broadband policies, things to do with cultures of individuals, things to do with the access to technology, training and capacity, things to do with gender, marginalization, poverty, and so many things. So, so theories of technology and innovation in the context of theories of change and media in everyday life really talks about how technology can be exploited for peace building, considering local dimensions. So it's a Pan-African digital peace building movement that advocate for gaining evidence from the ground of digital peace building and passing this evidence into workable digital solutions, both, both online and offline, but using youths who are present in those spaces, flesh and blood. These are not cyborgs. These are people you can find in online spaces, but you can summon them virtual, I mean, offline to do real time digital peace building the traditional way. So what you're seeing behind you there is a digital lab. This is a lab that was uh, uh, funded by the government. So the government is also very keen in Kenya. And that's why I saw, I saw talk about the context of the use of technology. If the, if the government digital transformation tra strategy is robust, the way the Kenyan one is, then you'd see a government supporting a digital peace building lab in a remote university in Kenya which I, 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 I started, uh, and, and you can see there that students are there uh, learning about how they can use digital peace building strategies. So this is a Mascani digital peace building lab, an infrastructure that exists to support digital peace building in, in the local context. And so Mascani interventions online uh, manage to train students 70 plus on the network of their networks, 12 faculty members, including youths from surrounding communities. And the students really went and influenced online conversations through the cycle of networks online on polarizing topics around, around politics, election, elections, ethnicity, or ethnic politics, and COVID-19. They intervened mainly on WhatsApp and Facebook. And therefore, 
we saw beautiful results coming out of uh, those interventions. And, uh, and as you can see there, maybe I should explain a little bit about the logo that you are seeing there. So Mascani, Mascani Commons adapted this digital logo. This digital logo is not, is not just a random thing. It was designed by default. You can see a Luo traditional hat there with the sunset and, a, a, and an indigenous tree. There's a narrative being taught, uh, spoken about there. This is a homely place. At the end of the day, if you went out shopping or fishing like the Luos do, when you come back home, you want, to, you want to go in there, drink very cold water from the pot and have a rest for the evening because it's sunset. This is where you want to really take stock or audit what happened during the day. So Mascani Commons on Facebook was represented through this symbolically, where people would come back and share their frustrations. But again, it was a Luo traditional house because it was thought of that in Kenya predominantly that the Luos are the masters of conflict, especially electoral violence and stone throwing, disputed elections and, and, and county. So it was interesting to use, to subvert the, the narrative of the Luo being the epicenter of violence to a community that can potentially embrace peace through a home that is peaceful and tranquil uh, and, 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 uh, and secure, as you can see represented in that image. So, so Mascani was born out of that. And, uh, and of course, after the workshop, we did, uh, we did uh, an evaluation of what we had uh, uncovered, what the student had uncovered in a period of six months. And this is what we found out. So uh, there are quite a bit of things that I would love to share, but because of time, it won't allow. But we saw that really Kenyans, and we had 226 en engagements. And these engagements were actually divided into politics, ethnicity, and COVID-19. And remember, these are the things that the youths agreed upon that they wanted to, 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 to intervene on because they are the issues that were con issues of conflict in Kenya at that particular time. 50% of them were about polit politics, and they were very, very polarized, polarizing, as we've seen. Then there was ethnicity related to that, following very closely. And then there was COVID-19. So in the closing workshop, the students who managed to finish up the program with us were actually issued with a, a certificate that recognized them. But so uh, we, we, we issued them with this certificate uh, in the closing workshop. And, and this workshop also created a space where community representatives, that the youth that are not necessarily university youth could join us and engage with the university students and faculty to identify ways that they could partner and support each other in future. And, uh, and share, I mean, share findings of the program. So the students received certificates for their participation in the full program. They exchanged experiences and got to know one another. They learned about offline peace building and how Mascani could be integrated in or support these programs. They learned about the program findings, what worked, what did not, and collective challenges and lessons. And they began brainstorming on what they would do ahead of the 2022 elections. So Mascani really then therefore became a lifetime digital peace building movement and members uh, today are peace champions who are self-driven in the concept of media and their everyday life and motivated in the spirit of media and everyday life. It has both online and offline presence currently intervening in the context of ongoing, uh, of the demonstrations that are ongoing in Kenya and it does offline peace building through music, arts, and cultural strategy to cater for the online offline dynamics. So some of the links you are seeing there, which are for the sake of time, I wouldn't want to go to, reflects how Mascani is manifesting itself offline. One of the examples is, is, is captured here, where we use, we gathered artists in an annual first of its kind music and arts festival called Karibu Kana Music and Arts Festival. And this was a peace design lab where we drew a, a river of life uh, exercise where participants would be told about an episode in Kenya or the journey of Kenya uh, in terms of democratic transition. And they'll come up with a lot of visuals there and we'll use that to co-design and to do what is called scenario building uh, on what would potentially happen uh, in the in the upcoming elections 
and this is what would be incorporated in the messaging. So the people you see there on the right corner there are people drawing the handshake. The handshake is the reconciliation that happened between the, the former pri president, Uhuru Kenyatta, and the current opposition leader, Raila Odinga, where they decided to end conflict and shake hands. This happened the second time. The first one happened between Odinga and, and, and Kibaki, the late, the second president. And it, it led to serious violence that I talked about in my previous slide in 2007, 2008, that led to mediation, that led to the new constitution, and so on and so forth. Uh, what you're seeing on the left side of the screen are uh, Mascani Digital Peace Building uh, Movement uh, uh, youths. You can see them there in purple t-shirts, and they were doing a live art. They drew that art in about five minutes that was done in front of a large audience. What you're seeing behind you there in blue placards, those are, that is a methodology, a peace building methodology that is called Truth Wire, where, where festival participants would be asked questions and then they put their answers secretly on those cards and we'll collect those cards also for guiding the process. And, and this, this one is the flyer that we distributed to the entire general public to come and attend the uh, peace building act activation offline. And those down there are all the partners that are interested in supporting offline peace building. So all these things that were happening offline were actually bounced back online. We posted them through videos, through short videos, through pictures and, and so on and so forth. And we got a lot of responses out of that. And for the first time we saw Kisumu being a very peaceful face. For the first time in history, Kisumu did not witness any electoral conflict despite travel advisories uh, issued by the US ahead of the declaration of presidential results and even ahead for the second time also ahead of the Supreme Court verdict. In both those critical issues where everybody expected Kisumu Kondela area to ban, nothing happened. And we see as if it's as, it's as if we did something there that uh, really changed and transformed the attitude uh, of, in, in, uh, of the youth there in the spirit of theories of change. So we see it very easy to transform youth attitudes through digital platforms that uh, they embrace and using through artistic expressions that they value. They feel uh, accommodated, they own the process, and they run away with it very fast, with very little or minimal incentives. Mascani was supported by a uh, build-up, Mascani Commons, the Center for Media, Democracy, Peace, and Security, which I'm uh, the director, and also the Peacemakers Corp Foundation, Kenya. I would like to stop there and maybe invite some reflections, if any. Otherwise, on the left side of the screen, we have a way of saying thank you in Swahili, and it goes like Asante. Thank you very much. Any questions, any reflections? Well, for, 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 for more, for those who missed, there's a question in the chat. Okay, let me see, two questions.
I don't seem to see any question there in the chat. Is there any? Oh, Razia Kimani, what was the question? Ah, I didn't, I seem to, to miss that one out. Uh, working with any fact checking platform because all of the disinformation and misinformation around Kenya and election. Oh, yes, I, I would want to tell you that we are currently partnering with Code for Africa. Code for Africa is the biggest data journalism consortium in Africa. And we are actually currently, in fact, we are with them here in Mombasa doing capacity building on digital peace building around disinformation disorder. Uh, where where disinformation, misinformation, and malinformation features, and we want to partner uh, with uh, relevant stakeholders uh, early enough because Kenya is actually revising its uh, national peace architecture, and they want to incorporate the aspect of digital peace building. And these uh, uh, stakeholders are the people that really matters when it comes to. Uh, dealing with digital peace, I mean, digital hate, disinformation, and misinformation. So yes, we do. And uh, we are actually also very much at the core of producing a report which will be tabled to the president uh, on the 16th of next month. And this report is supposed to advise on the, on the strategies to take in terms of overhauling the national peace architecture in Kenya going forward. So that's what I can say about that, Kimani. I hope that answers your question. Thank you. I think I see excellent there. So I think Kimani is happy with uh, my response. Any other concern, question, remark, reflection? Thank you so much, uh, colleagues. I think uh, if there's nothing much uh, left, I think uh, I'm, I'm thankful and, uh, and grateful that you all took your time to attend. And I wish uh, uh, to really uh, say that I, we might cross paths in the future face to face, not virtually, and look uh, forward to meeting all of you someday. But wish you all a good morning, good night, good day, wherever you are, until we catch up again but there will be a recording available for that i believe for those who uh, caught up with the presentation late to catch up with thank you so much and see you once again very soon god willing thank you